Java is so popular because of its feature and flexibility. Java is robust, simple and secure. Companies like Uber, Google, Instagram, Spotify are currently using Java for their software development. And all over the world, Java has 3 billion devices who are actually using Java. And Java is almost 4.5 billion popularity and also have 2.2% increment in each and every year. So keeping that in mind, we came up with a tutorial that is Java Multithread. In this tutorial, you will learn all about multithreading. So let's get started. Welcome everyone, welcome to the course Java Multithread. Before start the course, let me introduce that Great Learning has came up with a brilliant idea that is Great Learning Academy, where you will get almost 80 plus free courses and after complete your course, you can claim your certificate as well. And if you want to do the course in your mobile application, that is also available. You can go and you can install Great Learning Academy app where you will get all the courses. And if you want to do the courses in offline, there is a feature is offline as well. You can do all the courses in offline, right? So let's see what we have in today's agenda. So in today's agenda, we have the history of Java, how Java came into the picture. And then we will see how can you install Java in your local system and the integrated development environment we have that actually supports Java like Eclipse. Then we will see what are the variables and data types we have in Java. Then we will jump into the operators. These are the basic part of Java. When you start using any language, you need to have a good idea about all this to uh, learn something advanced on that topic, right? Then we will see the flow control statement. What are the uh, loops we have in Java? Then we will uh, jump into multitasking in Java. If you want to do multitasking, how can you do that? And then we will see what is thread in Java. Then we will see what is multi-thread in Java and what is the difference between multitasking and multi-threading. And then we will see what are the function we have in multi-threading, right? So let's get started. Now we will see what is the history of Java we have, how Java came into the picture and why the language name is Java, right? So Java was designed for interactive televisions, right? And but it was too advanced technology for the digital cable television industry at that time. And history of Java starts with green team. Okay, so Java team members are known as green team member, right? And Java project was initiated to develop a language for digital services such as set-top box, televisions, and etc. And later, Java technology was incorporated by Netscape. And that time, principle for the creating Java was simple, robust, portable, platform independent. We will see what is that platform independent stand for. And the uh, programming language should be secured, high performance, multi-threaded, architecture neutral, object oriented, interpreted, dynamic and distributed. These were the principle that time they have as a language. Okay. Then Java project was initiated by James Gosling and the Patrick Norton and Mike Sheridan in 1991. That is also in June 1991. Firstly, it was called by Green Talk by James Gosling and the file extension was .gt. After that, it was called Oak and it was developed as a part of Green project. And it was called Oak because why, why they end up choosing Oak, right? Because Oak was the symbol of strength and is chosen as a nationality of many countries like USA, France, Germany, etc. In 1995, Oak was renamed as Java due to the trademark issues by Oak technology. But why this they call, they renamed their language name using Java? Because Java is an island of Indonesia where first coffee was produced called Java coffee. So that time they ended up choosing their language name as Java. And on the 23rd of January 1996, JDK 1.0 was released. So this is the history of Java we know, right? Now we will see what is Java. 
Java is basically a widely used high level programming language, right? Java is free and open source. It is cross platform compatible and object oriented, right? And Java programs are interpreted by JVM, that is Java Virtual Machine, which runs on multiple platform. Okay. So now we will see why Java is so popular and why should you learn Java? So basically, you should learn Java because Java, Java is an object-oriented programming language, right? And Java is simple and easy to learn. If you are a beginner, if you don't have any idea about the programming languages, then you should go for Java because the syntax the Java has, they are literally very simple to start with. And Java has many powerful development tools. If you are a software developer, then maybe Java can be your choice because of its powerful development tools. And Java is platform independent as well. When I'm talking about Java is platform independent, let me give you an example for that you can understand what actually I want to mean by Java is platform independent, right? Suppose you are building a program for a particular company, right? But that company is interested to buy your solution, but your solution is platform dependent. Maybe your solution is uh, compatible to work on Linux or Windows or some other uh, platform, right? But when you write your program in Java, you don't need to think about which platform you are working on, right? So basically, if you're program is dependent on the platform, you need to change your program according to the platform. But for the all the company, they are not using the same platform, right? So your program will not be used for all the program, all the companies, right? So in that case, if you write your program in Java, you don't need to think about the which platform they are using, right? Your program will be compatible with all the platform like Linux, it may be uh, Windows, it may be anything. Right. This is how we call Java is a platform independent language. Basically, what actually Java does, it changes your code or convert your code to the byte code. OK. And all you need to have in your system to run a Java program, that is a Java virtual machine. Right. That's all you need to just execute your program in any platform. And then Java is a versatile and secure. Yes, your Java. Java language is secure because of uh, object-oriented language. It is an object-oriented language and it actually convert your code to byte code. This is how Java is actually versatile and secure. So these are the main reason for that. I can say you should learn Java, right? Now we will see why Java is actually getting the popularity because Java is the largest community for learners and the collaborators. Java is open source and free. You don't need to pay any single penny to buy Java, right? It is free. It is easy to learn and the flexibility of users is high. And Java has a huge number of multiple open source libraries. So let me give you an example. What type of a library I'm talking about? Suppose you want to implement a list or a queue, right? Or some uh, complicated data structure programs. So that time you don't need to write your program from the scratch. You can call Java collection framework where you will get all the complicated data structure. They are already implemented in that framework, right? So these are the facilities we got when we start using Java and Java has a great documentation supports. Suppose you don't have any accessibility for any courses or any other uh, websites, right? So if you go for Java uh, direct website, the official website, there you will get a great documentation by looking at those documentation, you can understand Java. Okay. And Java got popularity uh, because of the career opportunity. The, if you learn Java, your career opportunity will be very high because uh, companies like Google, Uber, Pinterest, they are actually using Java because of its all the features, right? So these are the main reason because Java is getting a pop high popularity after so many days as well. And when I'm talking about Java is object oriented programming. So object oriented programming has some features like, uh, like uh, thinking, designing, coding, everything is as an object. So just give, let me give you an example. Suppose you have your bike 
and your bike is not working properly so your you took your bike to the mechanics right so mechanics will give you a form where you can actually uh, note it down what are the parts is not working for your bike so what are the object for that scenario what do you think the car the mechanics the bike uh, the from everything is a object right so java deals everything as a object so what you can do you can create a class for your bike and the mechanics and the form okay and this and the create objects for each of the entities are process data okay so by the creating classes and the objects you can solve that you can solve and develop the problem with less time and the less code as well so create usable code and create a concise and easily understandable code can be done using java as well so and the main uh, features of object oriented programming is can uh, supports inheritance polymorphism abstraction encapsulation everything okay and java is actually a like you don't need to think when you are writing a code in java you don't need to think about the memory it used right so that memory is taken care by the jvm automatically so developer doesn't need to think about the memory so this is one more plus point for java as well okay and java is robust since it builds with the everything as object and can handle any real time problem with much easily and java is very secure it cannot harm your computer when it runs because it actually uh, the code you are running for java it's a safe for a jvm so these are the main basic reason you can say a uh, java is getting popularity every day and uh, if we look at the statistics per year that actually java has the 2.2% of increasing users because of these features okay now we will see how you can install java to so installing java you need to go to their official website that is oracle.com/java/technologies/ Slash Java is the download dot html. This is the site you need to go to install Java. It's a very simple process. You need to just download the Java development kit according to your machine, right? That's all you need to do. And if you want to use a integrated development environment, then only you can use Eclipse. This is a one of the best ID you can say. And just to install uh, Eclipse, what do you need to do? You need to go to their official website. www.eclipse.org where you will get your uh, machine compatible id and one more thing you need to remind that ki when you install a id before that you need to have java in your system if you don't have java in your system that id will not support you to program on that particular uh, integrated development environment so this is the best the basic key you need to understand when you start working with any id right now we will see our first program in java so our first program like we will just print a simple line using java so let's go to the eclipse and we will see how can i write how can i create a package how can i create a project for java and how can we actually go for creating our first class in java using eclipse now we came to eclipse and we need to make a project first before creating a class you need to remember that you need to make a project first and then only you are actually ready to create your own class so creating a project already i have created my project you can see i have almost three project in the uh, like i have demo one i have java collection framework i have multi thread i already make my project but i will show you how you can actually make your first project so for that you need to go to file and then you need to uh, click on new and then you need to click on java project right and that after that this form will come up that uh, you need to give your project name after give your project name suppose demo 4 and you need to uh, just click on next right and you can see there is a src folder this is a source folder of your code where actually uh, in this source folder whatever the class you are going to make it will come under this source folder right then you what do you need to do you just need to write finish right and okay so okay this is all you need to do when you start working with java and after that what do you need to do 
you need to click on src when you try to make your first class right you need to uh, click on src and then you need to so you will get a new one again you need to click on new and there you will get an option for class right so demo one this is my first class or i can make first class please remember that when we start giving our, our class name they, that always start with the capital letter this is the convention we follow when we use java and then we will use public static void name this is the main uh, method for our program where your program start executing your program start executing from the main method right so this is the main method you need to have in a java when you start writing a program right okay now i'm going to write finish okay so i already create my first class uh, in a demo 4 project under the demo 4 project i create my first class right now i'm going to print hello world so i need to write system dot out dot print ln and then i am going to write hello world and after that i am going to write that semicolon right let me execute for executing you need to use this button right you can see this is a play button like a like a button looks like play button you need to write, click on that and then you need to uh, just write like you need to just uh, say that which class you want to uh, execute so for my case i want to execute first class then okay you can see i got the output that is hello world so this is how we use eclipse to execute our java program right like if you want to store some data right so that time we need variables so variable we are using to store our data so suppose you have data 10 20 30 so store that you need to use a variable concept so variable is basically a temporary storage space uh, or a container you can say right so your 10 will be stored in the variable suppose a right 10 20 30 any name, any name and anything, right? Anything can be stored in a variable. So there are the data types. When I'm talking about that, 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 that variable can be a number, that variable can be a float, that variable can be a name as well, right? So we categorize the values in the Java variables, right? So those categories are known as the data types. So we have data types like int, we have data types like float, boolean boolean is a basically true or false value and we have string that contains the name or a sentence right that sentence or a name comes under string now we will see what are the operators we have in java so operators like we have arithmetic operators we have relational operators and we have logical operators we have three types of operators in java now we will see that uh what is if statement right so basically when we uh, work with multi-threading or any program like any uh, solution that time we need some loops and some statements so for that statements we use uh, if statement so suppose there is a use case that if it's the if it's weather is raining then i will see it in, inside or else i will go out and play football right so basically you want to play football and the weather is rainy so you say that if it's rainy uh, and if it's raining right now i will see it inside i will stay inside because there is no point of going out and playing football because no one will be there otherwise i will go out and play football so this is how you can use if statement that we will see how can we actually implement if statement in our program as well or there is one more example you can say if i got a marks is greater than 70 then i will get a ice cream right but if my marks is not 70 my parents is not going to give me a ice cream they will say go and do the practice test right so this is how we use if statement right so here is a uh, like example you can say i said if 20 is greater than 18 right that's not possible again i'm giving that if 20 is greater than 18 system dot out dot print lm 20 is greater than 18 right so here you can say we will get the output that obviously 20 is greater than 18 right 
Now I have two variable like int i variable index and int y. Index is equals to actually holding twenty value and uh, y is holding eight uh, eighteen, right? So if I say eighteen is greater than x, that's not possible because my variable y is containing the value of eighteen and x is containing the value of twenty, right? So I said. Uh, if y is greater than x, then print y is greater than x. Else, this else part is basically when your condition is not matching. So, is this in this case my condition is not matching? Obviously, eighteen is not greater than twenty. My loop will come to else part, and it will say uh, x is greater than y. Right? This is how we use if statement. So, let's go to our code and let's see how we can implement it. Right? So uh, I am using the same class over here. I am not making the new class. So here I say int x is equals to nine. Okay, right. And I am going to say int y is equals to ten. Right. Now I am going to use a if if y uh, suppose x is less than y. Right. That is obvious. Then system then print system dot out dot print ln y is greater right else in the else part basically when my condition is not matching that time I am going to write system dot out dot print ln and I am going to write x is Greater, right? So what I will do? I will just execute my program right now. Okay. So let's see what uh, output I will get. You can say it's saying y is greater. Now if I going, if I'm going to change the variable, so maybe I'm saying x is ten, y is nine, right? So let's see what output I will get over here. You can see now my uh, program is saying x is greater. This is how if you Actually works, and there is a one variation we have in statement that is if else if right. So basically, else if is used when you are uh, you have a multiple conditions right. Suppose marks is equals to sixty five right. I say if my marks is less than fifty, then I'm going to say this is a fail. Or else if I'm saying if my marks is greater than is equals to fifty. And my marks is less than sixty. I'm going to say this is a degrade. Or else, if if my marks is greater than equals to sixty and marks is less than seventy five, that time I'm going to say I got a C grade. Or if I say my marks is greater than equals to seventy five but is less than ninety, I said I got a B grade. But Else, if if my marks is greater than equals to ninety and less than hundred, I will say I got a I get a A plus grade. And lastly, if my marks is not is a like under fifty or any of the specified number, then I'm going to say this input is invalid. This is why we use if else if statement, right? So we have three part in if statement that if Else and else if. When you have a multiple conditions, that time we use else if. Otherwise, if you have two conditions, right, or if you have one condition, that time we use if and else part of the statement, right. So I hope you guys clear about what is if else statement and when we use if, else if, and if, uh, else, right. And yes, there is one more uh, example. You can say that number is equals to I took minus thirteen. My variable number is equals to minus thirteen. So if my number is greater than zero, then I am going to print this is positive. Else, if if my number is less than zero, I am going to say it's negative. Or else, right? If it's greater than zero, I say positive. If it's less than zero, I am saying negative. Or else, I am going to say otherwise my number will be zero. So in this case, my output will be negative, right? So this is how we use else if statement. Now we will see the looping statement. But why do we need looping statements? 
So basically, suppose it may give you an example. Suppose you need to print one to ten, right? So if you don't use you, you need to write one to ten like system dot print dot system dot out dot print n. So you need to write manually one to ten. But we use coding to solve to solve our problems, right? We don't want to uh, do hard works, right? So what we can do? We can use a loop. Loop statements are basically used to repeat a task multiple times, right? Your task, you, I want, I want to uh, like implement a for loop which can um, which can print one to ten value for me. I don't need to do anything. I need to just specify till what number I want that output, right? This is how we use a looping statement. Okay, so there is a example you can see. There's a keep filling this bucket with the mug of water while it is not full, right? We use for loop, we use while loop, we use if else statement, right? So let's see uh, how can you implement like or or some of the uh, like explanation about uh, loop. Suppose keep repeating the song until you close the app. Right, so I want to suppose a song is actually very close to me, and I love to hear that song multiple times. So for if you don't use loop, you need to go and you need to play every time, right? But for using loop, you can say if I'm going to close the app, then only my uh, song will be stop. Otherwise, it will keep repeating the song. So I hope you understand why we use loop, right? And suppose a salary. Get your salary credited at each end of end of each month, right? This is also a part of uh, for loop, right? So every month at the end of the month you got your salary, right? So if you uh, just use a system where you can say when the month end came, when the month end come, please credit the salary to all our employees. So what you don't need to go for each and every month and just put down that salary to the, to their account, right? What your loop will do for you. So there is a uh, example of while loop. Okay, what I write that in int x that is my variable equals to one. While loop while loop takes only one condition. So I said while x is less than equals to four. When my x now my x start with one. I want when my x is less than equals to four till that the your loop will continue. System dot out dot print till an x. So please print my x, and then I will implement my x is equals to x plus one. Every time my loop will execute, and it will increment by one times. So my loop will go till x is equals to is less than equals to four, right? Otherwise, it will go for an infinite loop. We don't want our loop to be infinite loop. So we mention a condition for that, right? Now we will see a for loop. So for loop, what is the syntax for for loop? For for loop, we need to write int i that our variable starts with zero and it will go till less than five, right? Till four and i plus plus. After after every time, it will for every execution, it will increment it by one. Right, and then I will print i. This is how for loop works. Right, or if you want to increment your for loop twice or thrice, what do you need to do? You need to write int i is equals to zero, and i less than is equals to ten. Then semicolon i is equals to i plus two or i plus three. Let's go to Eclipse and see how can we do that. So already I made my class. I'm not going to make one more. So, if you comment something, if you want to comment something in Java, you need to use this symbol. So your uh, that print statement will be commented. It will not get executed. It will get executed. It will not print anything, right? So let's see. Uh, suppose we are going to use for loop for int i is equals to zero. I less than maybe it will go till five and i. Plus plus. When my i is actually incrementing by one at a time, right? So I want to see system dot out dot print ln and then i. And you need to use semicolon. 
when you are using java please keep that in mind that always after your code line you need to put semicolon right so let me just execute it yes you can see i got 0 1 2 3 4 right so my i actually executed till 5 till 4 that is less than 5 now i want to increment my i is equals to i plus 2 so my i will be increment twice right let's see what uh, output we will get you can see i got 0 to 4 right this is how you can manipulate your i increment that is this is the process how we can use our loops right so we saw while loop we saw for loop we saw if and if statement and if you want to like just print a pattern right so you can say first one i got one second one i got two third one i got three and fourth uh, rows i got four and five fifth rows i got fifth right but how can we do that so in this case we need to use a two for loop right first loop will go till five whatever the rows number you have and the second for loop will go for the column how many column you want right so first for loop will start with zero and go till five i mean less than n that is till four and then it will just keep on incrementing i plus plus and the second loop int j it will start from zero and it will go till less than i why because it will go till your row number right so it will go till less than equals to i and it will get incremented that is j plus plus and i want to print star for each of the cases this is the system dot print star this star over here is a string right it's not a character i mean it's a character or a string you can say it's not a int or float right and then for the second uh, for loop when we come out from it we want to like print a space so what we need to do if you want to print a black line or a space what do you need to do you just need to write system dot out dot print in, right this is how we use our for loop right so yes now we will see about java multitasking before start with java multitasking let me give you an example for that you can understand what is this multitasking stands for right did you ever think how can a computer or a machine perform multitask uh, concurrently when it has single processor right so do you ever think what is happening inside your computer when you browse a web or listening a song or writing an essay or playing game at the same time the main idea behind this is sharing the same memory right your machine divides its attention between a uh, separate time and in the ways it can use the maximize maximize the resources of your machine right so this is where multitasking comes into the picture now let's see what is multitasking in java so multitasking is a process or an ability to perform multiple activity concurrently and this can be divided into process based and thread based so multitasking has a two part right one is process based and second one is thread based and multitasking is used to utilize the cpu of your machine and multitasking has two way i already defined this previously that is process based and thread based so what is thread based multitasking in java Thread based multitasking helps to run different parts of the same process simultaneously. Let me give you an example. For that, you can understand what is thread based multitasking. Suppose a person using his or her MS Word to print and also format the text, right? This is also multitasking, right? So, thread based multitasking share the same memory and communica communicating between two threads is less. Uh, and uh, like communicating between two thread is less expensive and thread is lightweight right where process is heavyweight now we will see what is process based multitasking so process based multitasking stands for processing multiple process to execute concurrently right 
suppose an example is a person using his or her computer to listen a song as well as working on software right so each process has separate memory area in computer uh, this is the difference you can say in between thread and process where thread using a same memory location and process using use the separate memory area in the computer all right and communicating between two processes costly and processes heavyweight where communicating between two threads is less costly okay and switching from an, an one to another thread is time consuming right so uh, this is the difference between time uh, thread based multitasking and process based multitasking right now we will see java thread right so i was talking about thread based but what is thread thread is a smallest part of the whole process which is lightweight in nature and can run concurrently with other parts of the program okay threads are small and independent it has separate path of execution and if one thread get the exception it does not hamper the other exception because of its separate path suppose you have multiple thread in your program so one thread suppose got the exception but for that your program will not stop the other thread will still remain continue executing because all the thread has its own separate path right all thread share a single memory right so because of this thread is less costly and uh, using thread is quite uh, usable as as well right you can say that now we will see what is multi thread in java so multi threading is java stand for execution of multiple threads simultaneously in java multi threading and multitasking both are used to achieve multitasking in java okay but multi threading is popular than multitasking because it uses the same shared memory when you use the same shared memory your program will less costly and effective as well so for that multi threading is popular than multitasking and if one thread get the exception i told you before as well if your one thread get the exception it does not hamper the other exception because of its separate path multiple operation can be done using multi threading and it saves times and money as well so this is the concept of thread in java and the multi thread in java and we will see how can you create a thread and how can you uh, create multi thread in a single program as well now we will have a look at what is the life cycle of the thread right we all human being have our life cycle we born we live our life and we go for day right so there also there is a for the thread also they have their own life cycle so let's have a look at what are the life cycle what are the stages they have in their life so basically there are all total six parts in their life cycle so life cycle of a thread has six part which starts from creating a thread till in the thread so we have new we have runnable state we have block state we have waiting state we have time waiting and terminated and now we will have a look at each of them and after knowing all those state we will implement those state in a java multi threading program right so first start with new state so what is a new state so a new thread begin its life cycle in the new state it remains in this state until the program start the thread it is also referred to as a born state so basically we can consider this state as a born a baby the way a baby born the same way the thread born by using new state right the when the thread is born we can call that this is in a new state now comes the runnable state so in the runnable is basically after a newly born thread is started the thread becomes runnable okay a thread is in this state is considered to be executing its ta task right so basically when we say our thread is in a runnable state right so in that mean your thread is actually executing the task you have given to that particular thread right so actually it starts working okay so in that case we can refer that state as a runnable state now we will have a look at the blocked or waiting state right so what is blocked or waiting state so sometimes a thread transitions to be waiting state 
while the thread waits for another thread to perform a task. A thread transition back to the runnable state only when another thread signals the waiting thread to continue executing. Right? Maybe you are working with multiple threads, right? So you want to a particular thread to be blocked for some times, right? In that time, we are going to use blocked or waiting stage. Okay, and after your work is done with the other thread, that time you can again say no, this thread, I, I put that thread in a blocked or waiting, they can start working, right? So in that meantime, when the thread is not working, the state is known as blocked or waiting state, right? Now we will have a look at what is time waiting, okay? The thread is in time waiting state when it's called a method with timeout parameter. A runnable thread can enter the timed waiting state for a specific interval of time. A thread in this state transitions back to the runnable state when that time interval expires or when the event it is waiting for occurs. Right? So this is how we, where we use that time waiting state. Now last come the last stage of the thread is terminates. So terminates in state used to Exit the thread, but this termination happen because of many reasons, like normally or some unusual error occur, right? So basically, if you want to stop some of, some of the thread, like to just make them, no, we don't need this thread anymore. So that then you can use the terminate function or sometimes we got some unusual error for our thread. That time also with this terminated uh, state can be come, right? So basically terminated are runnable thread enters the terminate state when it completes its task or otherwise terminates, right? Once you have give the task to your thread, it's already done. So it will go to the terminate stage because that thread knows that it like they has nothing to do, right? They have nothing to do right now. And they are actually going for their last state. That is terminated state. Or some of the unusual reason can be occurred for uh, that thread throw, uh, throws into the terminated state right so this is the life cycle we get from a thread so this is the whole life cycle of a thread okay now we will have a look at how can you create a thread but before start with that let me tell you that thread have a priorities as well so every java thread has a priority that helps the operating system determine the order in which threads are scheduled Java thread priorities are in a range between minimum property, a constant of 1, and maximum property, a constant of 10. By default, every thread is given priority, norm priority, that is a constant of 5. Threads with higher priority are more important to program and should be allocated processor time before lower priority threads. However, threads priorities cannot be guaranteed the order in which threads execute and are very much platform dependent, right? Now we will see how can you create a thread. So creating a thread can be in two ways. First way is if you want to extend the thread class and the second way is implementing runnable interface. So we have two ways to create a thread. You can extend the thread class or you can implement runnable interface, right? So what is class and interface? This is a basic concept of object-oriented programming. I hope you guys have a proper idea about what is the difference between class and an interface, right? Okay. Now we will have a look at the code. How can you do that? So here my class name is thread2. And always remember that this is a convention of Java when you start writing any code and if you are giving any name to the class, that class name should start with the capital letter, right? So here my class name is thread2 and I give uh, like the T is in the capital letter. Now I'm going to extend the thread class, okay? Class is always be extend and the interface we cannot extend. The interface we always, we always implements right now when you go for using the extreme thread class always you need to write like you need to override the run method that is i have public void run and in that what i said you need, i just said if i use the run basically what it happened i told you in the life cycle as well when you just born the i mean the thread is born right 
but after that we need to invoke that particular thread to in the run state to say okay you have born now please start working for that we need to override the run method okay so what we have done in the run method i said like i just want to print that thread is running currently right so i said system dot out dot print and we use this for printing like if you want to print any object in the java so i said in the system dot out dot print ln i just want to print thread is running currently right after that we need to have a main method because in java the program starts from the main method only right so i have declared in main method that public static void main string args i said i just want to create a object of class of my thread2 so what i did i use object name m1 so thread2 m1 is my object name and i create create the new object how is equal to new thread2 right now i want to start my thread how can i do that calling by calling the dot start function so m1 dot start so you can see in the output we will get thread is running currently so here we are seeing all this examples theoretically and i will do all this program in eclipse as well to give you a proper example that how actually we are going to do and what are the outputs we are going to get right before that i want you guys to understand the concept properly to go further with the multi threading in java right now we will see the second one that implementing runnable interface so when i'm saying that you need to you are going to implement a runnable interface that time we are not going to use extends right we are going to use implements function so here my class name is thread demo1 that implements runnable okay here also you need to override the void run function i say the same thing thread is running currently okay but here there is the catch right how you are going to create the object for that so first i need to create the object that is thread demo1 t1 is my object name and i'm creating the new object for my class using new thread demo1 now i need to create a object for thread right so what i did i say thread t2 is equals to new thread and i'm passing my object of thread demo class that is t1 right after that what i need to do i just need to write as samely uh, t2 dot start and your thread will be started and you can say it will give you output of thread is running currently right i hope you guys can understand that how we can create thread in two multiple ways right using one extending the thread class and second one is implementing the runnable interface right now let's have a look at thread scheduler in java what is a thread scheduler i have told you guys before as well what is thread priority in java now let's see what is thread scheduler so thread scheduler is a part of java virtual machine which decide the sequence of thread so basically we don't decide the sequence of thread this thread scheduler is actually going to decide the sequence of your thread if you use multiple threads so then your thread scheduler is going to get the sequence of that in java thread one thread can run at a time theek hai so in java what we have we can say that only one thread right can run at a time because if you want two thread will run in the same time that is not possible so there is a limitation we have that one thread can run at a time the, there is no sequence guarantee for which thread to get executed right so you cannot give the guarantee if you have multiple thread in your system on your program so you cannot give the guarantee maybe one will go first two will go second right it's all depends on the thread scheduler so we will have a look at that as well in the demo part now let's see what is slipping thread okay it's look it's actually a uh, sounding little uh, mysterious let's see what is slipping thread so slipping thread is called as using the slip method of thread 
class to sleep a threat for the specified amount of time so basically if you want to say i don't want my threat to walk right now i want to make that threat sleep okay so how can you do that using sleep method you can make a threat sleep for specific time okay threat class has two specific methods to call sleep for a specific amount of time okay so first one is if you want to just make call this sleep function how can you do that so doing that i can say public static void sleep function under that i can say long milliseconds so how many milliseconds you want that your threat should be in a sleep state throws interrupt exception so it can be throw a exception so in that case we say that throws interrupt exception or the second way it is you can say public static void sleep method and you can say long millisecond and second parameter can be int nanos and again it's going to throws in interrupt exceptions right these are the two ways by by which you can actually call your sleeping method to make your thread sleep right now we will see a demo of it how can you do that right so in this case you can see i have a class called demo sleep thread actually which extends thread or you can use implement runnable methods as well right so it's up to you which one you want to go for right i just want to uh, override the class of void run then i said in for loop int equals to 1 and less than 5 so basically my loop will go till 4 right it's less than 5 and i plus plus try we use try and catch block to throw a exception right to check a exception and catch if it's actually get a exception it will show that what actually the exception we got right so we use try catch block for that in the try i said thread dot sleep i want to make my thread in a sleep position for 1000 millisecond right so you can see i give for 1000 millisecond then i use a catch function i mean in that i said what are the exception that interrupted exception if we got and e is the object of that interrupted exception right and i'm going to system dot out dot print ln and i'm going to see what the exception i got that is e right and lastly it will show, give me that if it's in the try block if it's not in the catch block if it's in the try block then there it's going to give me the value of i right so then what we need to do we need to call two function over here two thread right so because if the first thread is in the sleep then second thread will start working right so in that i created two object of the thread right how can i do that by creating a object of my class that my class is demo sleep thread t1 is equals to new demo sleep thread the function then i'm calling again demo sleep thread t2 is equals to new demo sleep thread right so i said just to start for t1 dot start if you want to use you can use t2 dot start as well right then you can see that in the output you will get 1 2 3 and maybe you can get the same number 1 1 2 2 3 3 because you actually your one thread is becoming in sleep when the other thread start working right so we will have a look at this things as well in the demo part like what actually the output we are going to get right now let's have a calling thread twice if i want to call a thread twice what will happen then right if i want to play with this thread thing how can i do that so twice calling the start method for one particular thread is not possible but if you call twice then a illegal thread state exception is thrown right so what i did i just want to play with my thread i just want to see if i want to call my thread twice what it will give but your thread will say sorry you will get a exception right i'm not going to take start for twice right so what i did i have a class say thread 2 and i extend the method threads where i override the run method that is public void run and then i go i'm going to just print that thread is running currently okay now what i want 
I want to create an object of thread two class. So I create in one an object of thread two class calling new thread two. Now I'm going to call m on dot start m on dot start two times, right? You can see first time it took the start thread is running currently. For that we got the output. But in the second time it gives me a exception in thread that Java lack illegal thread set exception. So you cannot call twice a particular thread, right? Okay. Now we will have a look at call join method. So what is call join method? So join method in Java threads waits for a thread to die and it causes the currently running thread to stop executing until the thread it joins with completes its task, right? So what actually it want to say, right? So basically join method wait for a thread to die. It's actually wait uh, for a thread who is going to die. Okay, and it causes the currently running thread to stop executing. Okay, because it does not want that two threads will start uh, like fighting with each other. Wait, okay. So for that, the current running threads to stop executing until the thread it joins with completes its task. Right. For that, we use join method. So you can see in my join method in Java class, I extend the thread and then in the run method, I'm going to write for loop. Okay. That for loop is start from one and go till four. Okay. And after that, I'm going to use a dot sleep method and the millisecond will be 500 millisecond. For that, your thread will be in a 500 millisecond state. Okay. Then what I did, I actually create some of the object of my join min method in Java. So I create T1, T2 and T3. Three, three. three thread in join method Java. Now what I do, I did this T1.star. Okay. Try in the try block, I said T1.join. And I said in the exception, if you want to throw any exception in the exception class, I called the object and I just said system dot out dot print ln e right and then i call t2 and t3 for the start to start the thread okay this is how we use join method and we will have a look at all of them that what will be the output you are going to get in the eclipse so we will have ease alive method and java multi -thread synchronization as well before start with this two topic let's have a quick look at how you can like actually implement this still calling join method in eclipse right let's go and check it out so now we are going to use eclipse id that is integrated development environment to create our first thread right in this case i will show you how can you create your first project with java right so to create a project in java you need to go to file and there you need to click on new right from that you will get a multiple options but you need to choose java project i'm going to use java project now you need to give the project name for your java project right so here i want to give multi thread maybe okay so we have created the name of the project of a uh, java that is multi-thread demo one now we are going to click on next so you can see there is a sursi folder so if this sursi folder is basically a source folder for our project so all your code all your java file will store under this source file right now we are going to click on finish and yes i want to create a module info.java let me create it Okay, so we have got our project multi tree demo one. Now I'm going to create the first class. How can you create your first class? Go to source folder and then click on over there. You will get an option of new, right? From that new, what do you need to do? You need to go to class. This is the way you need to actually make your first class. So my class name will be over here that create thread, right? So always make sure your class name starts with capital letter. This is a good convention of doing the coding, right? All the professional maintain some convention when they actually start coding professionally. Now comes the main method. This is actually the heart of Java program. So if you want to execute any 
program in java in that case be sure always you have this main program say this main method if you don't have this main method your program is not going to run because the main point this first point when the uh, program start executing in java that is from the main method so we are going to tick on that right and now what we need to do we need to go for finish so this is how actually we are going to use our first class right now as we have created our first class that is create trade now we are going to create a trade by extending the trade class right so how can you do that so already we have our class name create trade now i'm going to write extends and then what class name I want to actually extend? That is trade. As I didn't write the class name, it's giving me an error, right? So I'm going to write trade. Okay. So I want to extend my parent class that is trade. Okay. Now I'm going to override the void run method. So it is a public void. Void means actually it's not going to return anything right so then we are going to write run method the name of the method is run and the curly bracket then whatever you want you can give that right for my case maybe i'm going to write system dot uh, dot println i hope you guys have an idea about what is the difference between print ln and print so basically print is something if you don't want a space right so if you don't want to have a uh enter like a like a gap between two lines so that time we are not going to use println but basically println when you have multiple line of output if you use println it will give a one line gap between those outputs right so this is a very important question for the interview what's the difference between print and println right now i'm going to write uh i have created my first thread right okay fine right now i'm going to give the semicolon now what i need to do i told you i need to create the object of my class right so my class name is create trade and my object name maybe i'm going to write obj is equals to new create trade right and i'm going to use the sum bracket so this is how actually we create the object of our classes in java okay now i'm going to say that object dot start so what it will do it will start the first thread in our program right so i'm going to write obj dot you can see i get plenty i mean multiple uh methods right so here i'm going to write start so i have i got this start method so i'm going to do that let's see what we will get to execute your code always remember that in your eclipse you need to click this play button it's like a play button right you need to execute your code so here you need to actually say which class you want to execute so for for my case i want to execute create trade.java right okay and let's see you can see i got my first output that i have created my thread right so this is how we actually create our first thread using what using thread extends threads class right now i will show you the second way how can you actually create your thread using actually implementing runnable interface right so let me create one more class for that okay so go to new you need to go to class to create a new class maybe this is also create trade but two right two, two class cannot be in same name now again we are going to click on the main method and then finish right so we got our class now this time we are not going to extend this right we are going to implement so because runnable is an interface and interface always be called by implementing that interface right so i'm going to write implements and then the interface name that is runnable 
okay so i have actually called so i am getting a little bit of so some of the reason runnable okay so let's see i am getting a error what error i am getting the type create thread to must be implement the inherited abstract method runnable dot run right so here it's giving me a error but for the extending the thread it was not giving me any error but as it's a interface it's saying you actually need to implement run method over here right so let's see what we can do that uh what i am going to do i am going to write public void then run method right i'm going to implement the run method in the curly bracket right so here you can write i i'm going to write the same thing system dot out dot print in and i'm going to pass that i have created my first thread right okay i'll write the case oh my god okay so you can see i have already implement that and we don't have the error over here right now we will see how can you call them right to calling them again we need to make a object of my class so what is my class create thread two right and i'm going to write the object that is obj again i'm taking the variable name obj that is will be my object for my this class that create thread two i'm going to write new and i'm going to write the same thing create thread two and the round bracket this is how i'm going to create the first object of my class but here i need to make a object of thread class as well so thread maybe a is equals to new thread right and from this we actually need to pass the object of our class that is obj right so you can say this is how if you want to call a thread using runnable interface right so now let me execute that so what we will right so you can see we actually our thread is running right okay but we did not get the output so now as we have already seen how can you actually create a thread using extending thread class now we will have a look at how actually you can uh, create a thread using implementing runnable interface right so let's first create a class for that right so creating a class again i need to click on the source folder and then i need to get the new one right so i will get the new option and from there i need to create my class right so in the class i am going to write my create thread two right again always be sure that whenever you are going to make a class the first element of the class will be capital letter right now i am going to click on the main method as it's the heart of java program now i'm going to click on finish right so we get it now what we need to do we need to implement the runnable class so i'm going to write implements which interface i'm going to implement i am going to implement runnable interface right so runnable interface right so you, you can see still i'm getting a error but why i'm getting a error because my interface is a abstract method right it has a abstract method of run method so i need to implement that method as well otherwise i will get the error now i am going to write public void we are using void that will not return anything and the method name is run and after that the curly bracket now i am going to write the same thing system dot out dot print ln and in between that i want to pass i have created my second thread i have created my second 
trade, right? So if when my uh, like uh, trade is started, that time it will give me this message. Okay. Now what I need to do, I need to create the object of my create trade demo class, right? So let me create that. Create trade demo and then I need to give the object name, right? So my object name is obj. I'm going to use that. Okay. I'm going to write new create trade demo and in the round bracket, right? This is how we are going to create the object of our this class. Now we need to create the object of trade class, right? Always remember when you are going to implement runnable, that time you actually need to create the object of trade class as well. So trade and again I'm going to write obj1 is equals to new trade, right? And in that round bracket, we need to pass the object of our this class. So obj. Now that's right. So this is the main key over here when you are going to use implements runnable interface and we are going to use extends thread class, right? Now I'm going to start my first thread using implementing runnable. So I'm going to write start method. So I have already get that. Okay. So let's see. Let me execute it using this play button. Okay, so you need to actually select which class you want to execute. So for my case, I have only one class. So I have actually used this. I mean, I have marked this, right? And then, okay. So you can see I got my output that I have created my second thread, right? So this is how you can actually create two, two types of thread using one implementing runnable interface and one is extending Thread, right so let's see the next demo we have now we are going to see how can you implement sleep method using eclipse or using java right so let's create this like let's use the sleep method in multi-thread for that we are going to use again a new class i'm actually using new class to make sure guys you don't have any doubts right i can do all these things in one class again that can be a problem or confusion for you guys for that i'm making a class for each and every methods and each and every thing we are doing right so if you guys are will be comfortable with this eclipse as well you guys will get to know how can you make the classes how can you make project when you start working with eclipse right so again we are going to go for new and then class and here i'm going to use demo sleep so i'm going to make a demo for sleep method right so demo C and again, I'm going to take the main method, right? Okay. So how can you do that? For that, I need to again extend the thread class. So here I'm going to make the thread using extending thread class, right? Extends thread. Okay. And I am going to actually override the public void run method. Okay. So I actually override that and here I'm going to write system dot out dot println and then uh, maybe I'm going to write uh, let's start using sleep method. Okay. So almost writing this void run method is almost done now what we need to do we need to create the object of the class right so demo c and then we are going to give the naming for the object that is obj you can use anything a b c d anything whatever your choice is the new demo c right okay so i have created the, i have created the object for my class. Now what do I need to do? Now I need to just use our try catch block in the run method or again you can do something like for loop as well. Let's let's have a something new in that. So in the run method I'm going to use a for loop right. 
so we have done the basic the way we actually create the thread now we are going to see how can you implement sleep method right so i am going to use a for loop where i am going to initialize i is equals to 1 and i will go less than is equals to 10 right and sorry 10 and from that, I'm going to use I++ for my I increment. And in between the for loop, I'm going to write try block. So why do we use try block? Try block is used to get, if you get any exception, if you feel like from that line, maybe you will get exception, you can put that into the try block. And the catch block, if you get any exception, it will show what exception you will you get, right? For that, in the try block, I'm going to write that okay just a second yes i'm going to write that uh let's have thread dot c method so this is how actually so you can see we have two ways to actually uh implement it c one is long millisecond one is you can give long millisecond and int nanos as well so in my case i'm going to take long Milliseconds. So here you need to give how much millisecond you want. So for my case, I want 500, right? Or maybe I want 1000, right? Okay, now I need to like, give the catch block. Otherwise, you will give me a error for that, right? They always need to go for, if you implement try, you need to as well as implement catch block as well, right? In the catch block, I am going to say, and again, here you need to give the inter like the uh, interrupted exception, right? So in that case, I am going to write interrupted exception, right? And I am going to write the object of that interrupted exception. So maybe A, okay? Fine. Now what I need to want, I want to see the exception I am going to get if my thread goes into the catch block, right? System.out.println and then I am going to write A. So it will give me the whatever the like exception I have get. I got it, right? So this is how we are going to write it. And one more thing, I maybe... If it's in the sleep, after that, I want to see the i values as well, right? So, system dot out dot println and then my i value, right? So, let's see. Uh, and, and before that, one more thing we need to do. We need to call the start method as well, right? So, let me start that. So, what I need to do obj dot start. So these are the basic part we all know when we actually create the thread. Okay. So let me do that. Just execute the demo sleep. Yes. So you see I got this. Let's start using sleep method. But you can see I am getting 2, 3, 4, 5, 7, 8, 9. But with a time of interval. Right. You can see I got it, but with a time of interval. Maybe I can make it to 10,000 as well. Let's see. It will take more time for that, right? This is how sleep method is working. After start doing your tasking, it will put into the sleep method. So you can see I am not getting any value. So it's actually taking 10,000 millisecond time. That is one I get. So it's taking more than the before one, right? So I... Change the number of milliseconds that is 10,000. You can see I'm getting one, two, it's taking time. So, this is how actually sleep method works. Okay, so let's wait for, till the output we are getting over here. And then I will show you if we have two uh, different thread, right? How it's going to work, right? So, maybe here I have one thread, but if I have two different thread, yeah, three different thread. Right, how my Java actually JVM is going to handle that. Okay, right. So you can see it's just five till now. So it's taking an actual time to get printed because they are putting the thread into a sleep method. And when your sleep is continued for 10,000 millisecond, okay, 10,000 millisecond when your thread is in sleep. 
After that, your thread become activated, and again your thread start doing the task. Right? You can see I got till seven. So let's wait for eight, nine, and ten. And after that, we will reduce the timing because it's taking on like a uh, ten thousand millisecond time. So we will make it to five hundred. So it will not take a long time. Right? Okay. So it's almost nine, and it's going to be ten. So let me just change it. In the meantime, so five hundred. I have made this is five hundred. Now what I need to do? I just want to make one more object for my class, right? So basically, what it will do? It will actually call one more thread. So let's see how my like JVM is going to handle that. So here I'm going to write obj one dot start. Right? Let's see what will happen for that. Okay, let me execute it. So you can see it's going two times. Okay, it's going too fast. Okay, let me do this for at least for thousand times, right? So it will be not that first. Okay. So basically, what my JVM is doing, it's actually taking the output, but you can see it's taking one, one, two, two, three. What actually it is doing? It's taking the first thread. It's Putting that thread into sleep and take and then it takes the next one. Okay, so for that we are getting like the number one to ten twice, right? One one two two three three four four five five six six seven seven eight eight nine nine ten ten, right? Because first it's taking one thread, then it's like using the task, the whatever the task that thread has, it's doing the task and then it put that thread into sleep. Now the JVM taking the second thread, right? After this, taking the second thread, it start doing the task and then again put that second thread, uh, second thread to the sleep. Right? This is how the sleep method works when you have two threads. Maybe I I can have hundred of threads, right? But that can be handled by JVM only, and you cannot ensure the sequence of the thread as well. Right? So let's see what next we have in the day. Now we will have a look at. Uh, some probability. If we can call a start method twice, then what will happen, right? Always, if you are learning something new, you should go for experiment these things, right? If you start experimenting with this, like that particular topic, you will learn more. So let's see. Let's see. So let's see what we have. If we just use the start method twice, what will happen? For that, again, I'm going to write. Uh, like I'm going to create a class. Okay. So new. And then class and twice. Let's see twice. Sorry, twice. What start demo, right? This is how I'm going to like write the name of the class, and I'm going to use the main method. So, the, what are the common things we need to do? We first need to go for extending thread class. Okay, because I love to use extend thread one because I don't need to write two lines of code. But if you guys want, you can use uh, implement runnable interface as well. Okay, so here I'm going to just overwrite the class right public void run. Okay, and then I'm going to write that uh, maybe. System dot out dot print ln and then I am going to give you a uh, experiment with threads because I always love to do something if I am learning something new to do experiments with that right so here I am going to like now what we need to do we need to create the object so twice Start demo our class name and then obj is equals to new twice start demo right yes so we have created the object of our class now what we need to do we need to actually say start so obj dot start But in this case, we are going to use start twice. Let's see what will happen for that. Let me just execute that. 
Okay, you can see first one we got it that experiment with threads. But the, for the second start, we got a Lang illegal thread state exceptions. So always remind that you cannot use start function twice for a particular thread. You need to use start function one if you want to start a thread, right? You are not allowed to use twice the start function, right? So let's see. Uh, now we are going to see what if we can call run method directly instead of start method, right? What our program or our thread is going to give us, right? For that, again, I'm going to write a class. So let me do that. So new and then class. So here, what we are going to write, Udo, we are going to call run method directly instead of start method. So let's see. Uh, run D, okay. Okay, public static void main string or the main one. Then we are going to extend thread. Right? So then we are going to use the public void run method and I'm going to write experiment. Okay, I'm sorry. Here I'm going to write that system dot out dot in and then experiment with run method okay let's see what I am going I'm supposed to get with that so I think like doing this kind of a experiment with a new thread you will get a proper idea and the proper uh, like vision about threads, how actually these threads are working. What's the life cycle of these threads, right? Right. So now what I need to do, as I have said that, again, I'm going to make an object of my class that obj. Maybe you can write is equals to new run table, right? Okay. This is how I'm going to create the object of this particular class. Now what we need to do, normally we used to use dot start method, but here what we will do, we are going to use obj dot run method. So let's see what it's going to give me. Okay, but here also we are getting the uh, output, but what actually it, it actually what's the difference between that because each thread starts in a separate call stack right Invo invoking the run method from the main thread the run method goes on to the current call stack rather than at the beginning of a new call stack so this is the difference between when you are actually calling run method instead of start method right so let's see if we are going to call uh, the second second object if you are going to create right so this is the difference between when you are going to use run method and when you are going to use start method so yes so obj one dot run right so let's see what's going to give me okay for the both cases we are getting the same thing okay but the thing is that that's the main problem you are getting that invoking the run method from the main thread, the run method goes on to the current call stack rather than at the beginning of a new call stack, right? So this is the difference between run and start. Now the next demo, we will look at the join method. How we are going to use join method in the thread? So what is join method? So we have discussed about join method earlier as well. But for the recap, let me give you a brief about join method. So join method waits for a thread to die. In other words, it causes the currently running thread to stop executing until the thread it's joined with completes its task. Right? So there is a two way you can do this. So now we are going to do this in the Eclipse. For that, what we need to do, we are going to create a new class for that. Okay? So... Let me create a new class to do the join method. Okay, so new and from there we will go for a class 
and here I'm going to use a class name join demo right okay so this will be my class name and I'm going to use the main method as well so it's taking a little long time yes so we got the class let me just click on that so we got the class now what we need to do the basic thing we need to do extends from thread graphs right okay so here actually for each and every demo we are using a thread class and we are extending from that but if you want to do these things from learnable interface that is also can be done right now we are going to do public void run method and we are going to pass some new thing maybe we are going to take a for loop for that right so let me do that for i mean using for loop it will help you to understand that how actually join method working over here right so int i equals to zero i less than 10 and i plus plus right okay so now what we are going to do we are going to use the try block right so why we are using try block i told you that try block is basically if you think that block like the code block you have can have a exception can have a error right so in that time we actually put that part of the code in the try block to handle that exception right so in this case i am going to write thread dot sleep the variable is in sleep method and i'm going to give 500 for this so i want my thread should be in a sleep for 500 milliseconds and here i'm going to use a catch right so in the catch again you need to write the exception so exception is the parent class right so i'm using e for that and let's see what i want to see i want to print if it has any exception please show me the exception for that right so e right so this is why we are using try and catch block now what i want i want to see my i value system dot out dot print ln i so now i want to see my i value now what i need to do i need to create some of the like maybe multiple threads over here so creating multiple threads what we need to do so for that we need to create the object of my this class right so join demo right is equals to maybe obj the first object i'm creating is equals to new join demo and the round bracket so this is why this is how we actually create our first object so here i'm going to just copy the same line and i'm going to change the object name because we cannot have object in the same name right so yes object one so maybe there will be object two right so we have created multiple object of what we have created multiple object of my class join demo right now what we need to do we are going to start our first object so obj dot start okay let's see but now we are going to do one more thing we are going to join as well right so in the try block again maybe in the try there can be an exception we will get so i want to put them in the in the try block right so obj dot join you can see i got it already dot join method right and from there i want to have my catch block in the catch block what i want i just want exception if i get any exception please show me the exception okay okay now i want to print the exception System dot out dot print ln right. Uh, just show me the exception. If I have any exceptions, right? Okay. So now this is how we are going to join it. Okay. Now I'm going to start the other two.
afraid of my program. So let's see how it's going to work. Okay, I need to write OBJ. For that, it's giving me error. Okay, now here I'm going to write OBJ two dot start. Right. So, guys, whenever you are learning something, try to like have like increase interest for that. Right. So, for that time, you will actually start loving that portion. Loving that part of the coding. Coding is very simple. It's not at all like we first thing we came into our mind that coding is very uh, complete. Uh, it's very complicated, but trust me, it's not. It's just like a normal mathematics we do, right? So let's just execute the program. Okay. Fine. You can see I'm getting zero, one, two, three. But I'm getting 0, 0, 1, 1. I mean, there is no other option, right? There is no other way to find it out that what will be the sequence of your object. What will be the sequence of your thread, right? So you can see here, uh, this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. We got. Why this is so? Because we join our first method, right? So what it did actually, like, Said other thread. No, no, I don't. I'm not going to give you the chance to get started. So first, let me get start, and then, and then, if you have time, then just go and just execute, right? So you can see. Let me execute it once more time. So you will see there is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, right? Why? I mean, you can see one more thing. If I can give it to 5000 so you will see that first uh, first thread we are having that is obj that is actually running first the other the other object we have they are not getting executed but normally it's not the thing right normally what used to it used to have the all the if any thread is in sleep then the next one will come and start executing the task right so you can see i'm getting one and i'm getting two it's taking time because it's not like giving you they giving the other object of the thread like get executed right first the object obj will be executed then obj1 and obj2 will be get executed you can see 0 1 3 4 5 right so this is why actually we are using join method to execute our first uh suppose you want that first this thread will be executed right the other state other uh, thread will be on hold right so that is why we use join method you can see 0 1 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 this is actually executing the first thread right that is ob obj right this is why we are using join method now we will have a look at how can you make your thread a name suppose i want to give a name to my thread how can i do that Right, the thread class provides methods to change and give the name of a thread. By default, each thread has a name that is thread zero, thread one, and so on. By we can change the name of the thread by using set name method. The syntax of set name method and get name methods are we are going to check that in the eclipse. Right? Let's see if I want to change my thread name and if I want to identify my thread through the name, let's see how can we do that, right? For that, I'm going to just create one more class, new class and a name thread demo maybe, the class name and I'm going to use the main method as well, right? Now what do we need to do? The same thing, extends thread. But guys, what I'm doing this thing so many times, did you ever think of? Because I want you guys to be used to with this extending the class from thread or implementing the interface from runnable, right? So this is one of the best part of Java. And if you want to start your career in Java, you really need to have a good idea about multi-threading, right? And whenever you go for any interview right in that time they will ask you about the multi-threads obviously because there's a most uh, useful part right 
so this is why i am just using classes each and every time for that you guys can be quite familiar with the thing that how actually we can create a thread and how we can manipulate them right so let's see now what we need to do already we did it now we are going to extend thread now what we will do we will use the public void run method right and in this what we are going to add maybe we are going to say name changer has came right already shown right so maybe i want this to be printed when the run method will be executed right okay now what we need to do we need to write uh i'm going to write what i'm going to go for a public static void name now i'm going to going for creating a object of my name thread demo class right so let's do that but this time we are going to make two thread just to identify them okay name thread demo obj is equals to name so what we did we use new name thread demo and we have created the object of obj right so now i'm going to add one more object to my class okay so let's just copy and paste okay so i'm going to call obj1 and always remember we cannot have same name object for our respective class okay okay now what we are going to do we are going to get the name okay so first we are going to see what is the name we are getting for them so system dot out dot println and we are going to use the what we are going to use the get name method for to getting the inbuilt or default name of my tree right so we need to that name of default name for the first thread right and if you want to conquer something in java how we are going to do that we are going to write plus sign right okay now i am going to write what obj dot get name uh oh obj dot and we got it that get name right so i want to get the name of obj now the same thing we are going to do for the second object or the second thread as well so default for the second thread this is according to us right so this is my first thread this is my second thread and then obj1 dot get me so let me execute that first okay so you can see okay i didn't use println guys you can see for that i get all the output in one line right so let me use the println because it's so easy to understand okay so you can see i get for my first name of the first thread is thread 0 and the default name of the second thread is thread 1 right now what we need to do we are going to start our thread so obj dot start okay and we are going to write obj1 dot start right now what we are going to do we are going to set a name for our second thread maybe so obj1 dot set right we got the function that is set name now i am going to write the first thread name so what can be that right so maybe game of thrones i'm a big fan of game of thrones so maybe it will be game of 
controls. Right? Let's see. And one more thing. Now we are going to see the name of the this two thread after changing the name for the second thread. Right? So I'm going to remove the default part because let's see what we will get now. Okay. Let me just execute that. Okay. You can see we got it, right? Okay. So we got it, right? Default name of the second thread is thread 1. Name for the first thread is thread 0. Name of the second thread, Game of Thrones, right? Okay, so this is how actually it works. Okay, so this is how actually if you want to put a name for your respective uh, thread, you can do that, right? So I hope you are quite clear with this part of the thread. And let's go and check some of the other demo as well with thread. Now we will look at is a life method. What is is a life method? So is a life method actually to help you to understand your 3D is alive or not. So let's have a look at the definition. To know whether the particular thread is alive or not, we use to is alive method, which returns the Boolean value like true or false, right? So let's go to the Eclipse and let's see how we can implement that. Now we came to Eclipse and I have already written the code in my Eclipse and we have created a class is alive. Okay, so is a live demo is, is my class name and what we need to do, we need to extend thread class, right? So we have extend thread class and from that we actually implement the run method as well. So we write public void run and in the try class, try, uh, try block, basically why do we use try block? We use maybe if you think that that part of your code can have an exception that time we want to handle them using try and catch block. In under try block, we are using going to put our thread into sleep using dot sleep method. And from that, we are saying I want to put my thread into sleep method for 500 milliseconds. And I'm going to show that print that uh, what is the current state of my thread. Okay, how we will get that? We are going to use thread, right? Thread dot current thread, right? So you, you can see we have write, written that thread dot current thread method and then we have called is a life method, right? So it, it's going to give me that what's the current state of my thread, okay? Now what we will do, we will go for doing the other part of the program. And in the catch part, we are going to say, if you get any exception, please show me the exception. Right, so catch exception E and system dot out dot print LF E. It will show you the exception you have get. Right now, what we will do, we will go for our main method, and there, what we need to do first, we need to create the object of our class. Right, first, we create the object of our class that is is a live demo, and we have decided the name of the object that is obj. And then equals to new is alive. This is how we create the object of a class. Then we are going to print that before starting the thread, right? So if you are not going to write that dot start, we all know that our thread is not going to start. In that time, I want to see the status of my thread. So what I did, I just write obj dot is alive, right? So this is going to give me the state of the thread before using the start method. After calling the start method, again I'm going to print it that what's the state of my thread after using the start. So let's execute it. So we will get that. So you can see first before starting the thread, it's got false because we do not use the start, start method. And if you guys can look closure, you can see our main program has started from the main method, right? Not from the run run method. So first is have printed that before starting the thread, it is false. After starting the thread, it is true, right? And lastly, it has going, it, go, it goes to run method. And it's showing, 
show me the state of my current thread that is true so my thread is alive when it's the thread is in the run method right so this is how you can check if your thread is live or not okay now we will look at the last topic in our multi thread that is multi thread synchronization now we will have a look at java multi thread synchronization how synchronization actually help us to do the coding in java and let's have a look at the definition so synchronization concept in java stand for control the access of multiple threads who are using the same memory so we'll all know thread is actually uh use the same memory if we have three threads so it will all like all the three threads will use the same memory so let's go to eclipse let's see first we will see if you are not going to use synchronize method what it will happen and then we will see if you are going to use the synchronize method how actually it help us to synchronize our threads so we came to eclipse and you have you can see i have created a class called without synchronization dot java right i hope you guys are quite clear with how to like how to make the class how to create your class in java project right so here i have make one class that is class table okay in that i have a void a uh, method that is print table where i'm going to send the int in parameter right int in is my parameter now what i'm going to write i'm going to write a for loop int i is equals to 1 i'm initializing i from 1 i less than equals to 5 and i plus plus and then i'm going to print system dot out dot print l n n into i right so n is basically the parameter i'm going to pass and i is the for loop range okay now i'm going to use again a try block to check i mean just to put my thread into the sleep method so thread dot sleep and it's going to be sleep for 400 millisecond and in the catch we are going to do the same thing that is system dot out dot print l n and show me if i get any exception right and nextly we are going to make one more class that is my thread one which actually is to extends the thread class right and we are creating a object of t right this is very important right so we here we are creating a object of table t right now thread my thread table t are passing this to uh, my thread one is my constructor right so what is constructor constructor is something that is the name of the constructor is always that same name of the class okay so we have three types of constructor i hope you guys have a idea about that so my thread one and we are passing the object of table t okay and we are using this function to refer the current object right so this dot t is equals to the new t equals to t right and we have a run method again we are going to implement the run method as we are extending the thread class right so in the run method i say t dot print table that is 10 so you can see in the print table what i said i am going to print the n right so i am going to give the parameter that is t so in the third class i have class my thread 2 and extend thread okay again i am going to create a table t right the same object of table t but they are not synchronized okay so let's see how these are going to work and the same thing we have written over here as well this dot t is equals to t and we are going to provide 9 okay and lastly what we will do we will create a class of my our class name and we will are going to create the object for that first we are going to create object for table obj that is my table class that is obj a new table then the second class that my thread one t1 and you my thread and we are going to pass this obj as it's a constructor right and for the t2 we are doing the same thing right now what we need to do we need to start the thread and we have started the thread right let's execute it and let's see what we will get So you can see, I got ten, I got nine, I got twenty, eighteen, thirty. I mean, nothing is like you. If you look at the 
output you will not able to understand what is going on right so you don't know that what is coming first what are the like thread are actually working so in that case this is very really impossible to manage this right so in that case we want to go for synchronizing our thread so let's see how we can actually use the synchronize method now we are going to use the synchronize method to get our result in a synchronized manner and here also we are going to use the same class i'm not going to write the other class right it's a big program and there is no point of writing the same thing it is just a matter of synchronize method where we need to put it so after the class table i am putting that synchronize method to the void print table method right so let's see what we will get after that after putting a single synchronized method if you can look at the uh, output you can see i am getting a output in a proper synchronized ma manner right first i am getting 10 20 30 40 50 <laughs> and then 9 18 27 36 and 45 right so first i am getting the 10 20 30 40 and then i'm getting the print table that n into i part right so this is why synchronize is needed when you have multiple uh thread in your class right it helps your class to understand which thread will go first and which one will go later right so this is how we are going to use synchronize method in our program now we have came to the end of our session right so thank you so much okay we have learned so many things about multi threading we have seen so many new methods we can use like how can you change the name of the uh, thread how can you if we can going to use twice a start method what will happen how can you use is like method how can you synchronize your thread right so please go through the all the multi thread tutorial it will help you to understand multi thread in a properly in a like it, you will get the proper insight for that but before complete the session i will ask you guys to go to great learning academy and where you will get almost 80 plus free courses and after complete your course you can claim your certificate as well if you want to do this courses from a mobile application that is also available in great learning app right and if you want to have more good content like this more quality content like this please do subscribe our channel and please let us know what type of courses if you guys want from us right thank you so much thank you so much for attending the session